Okay, this is the first of two videos from Math Warehouse on the topic of planes. You can find this and the other tutorials and resources on this topic at mathwarehouse.com slash planes. <coughs> In this video, we're going to look at two things. One, what is a three-variable linear equation? If I give you something like x plus 2y plus 3z equals 11, like what the heck does that represent? What does it look like? How could you, what does it look like on a graph? And then two, what do systems of three variable linear equations look like? The second video that we'll do, we'll look at how you could solve these kind of systems using elimination. <clears throat> this video will just focus on the concept of three variable linear equations and systems. So, you are probably familiar, well you're hopefully familiar, with systems, or sorry, with two variable linear equations. Like if I gave you two variables, x plus 2y equals 11, you I'm sure know that that is a line. And let's think about what that looks like. That looks like something on, in two dimensions where we have an x and a y axis, and our line goes straight through that, um, that axis somehow. Uh, sorry, that graph somehow. Notice this is in two dimensions, an x and a y. If we add a z dimension, some kind of z dimension, what we end up having is three dimensions, and we have something that goes through three dimensions. And it's no longer a line. Now we're dealing with a plane. This blue thing here represents a plane with an, an x and a an y and a z graph coordinate plane. The green thing here, you, the green and the red you can ignore. What we're interested in is just this idea that um, a three variable linear equation, like we just looked at, is represented in three dimensions. You need the z dimension now as well as the, the x and the y that you've always used. And it is now this thing called a plane. And a plane is basically just like a, in terms of what it, what it, how to think of it, it's really just like a sheet of paper. All right, like this blue sheet of paper represents some three variable linear equation. Okay, that's um, a picture of it, and this comes from the nice people at mathinsight.org. They've got some really cool applets there, um, and I thank you for making them Math Insight. Now, we want to try to understand what is the deal with a, sorry, just a little typo there, with a system of planes. Or what is the deal with a system of three variable linear equations? Right, remember, a plane is a three variable linear equation. And it can be pictured as that blue, sh blue thing we looked at earlier. Now, before we try to understand that, let's think back about what we knew about two variable linear systems. It'll help us understand well, like what we might want to do with a three variable linear system or planes. All right, when we were talking about um, Three var two variable linear systems, all that a system means is more than one. So it meant that we had more than one line, right? Here's two different lines. Here's another example of two different lines. And there are really three cases for two variable linear systems. They could either intersect once. zero times. Notice these lines are parallel, right? You can see these are parallel lines and they're never going to intersect. Or infinite number of times. And when an infinite is just kind of almost like a trick. It's like I could say that this line here is y equals 2x plus 3 or I could say it's 2y plus equals 4x plus 6, right? If I divide everything here by 2 I get the same equation. So an infinite number of solutions is like when we really have the same equation expressed twice. And, I don't know, let's say that these two equations were something like y equals 2x and y equals 2x minus 1. And then we have two equations here. So notice, a system of linear equations, if we want to find out the number of intersections or solutions, requires two equations. Right? We have the equation of this line, the equation of that line. The equation in, the, in this case of the line going downwards and the line going upwards. So, how many planes are we going to need when we want to talk about the number of intersections? Will we need 
two planes in our system? Again, the, when I say how many planes do we need, I mean if we want to figure out the number of intersections. This tutorial is just, hey, what is a system of planes and what are the number of intersections that we could, could find? The next tutorial will be how do we actually find them. Well, let's look at what a picture of two planes are. Will we need three planes? Will we need four planes? All right, these are just questions that we're going to answer. All right, so I switched to a new picture here. What if we were just talking about um, two planes? And here's what you should picture these planes as. It's this plane here. It's like a completely flat sheet of paper. Then we have another plane here that's kind of angling up and going right through it. Will that help us find a unique, or is it going to be possible to find a unique point? So when we're talking about, again, we're trying to figure out how many how could we find the solution of a system of planes? The problem with only two planes is that you're going to get all of these intersections. You'll get one here and here and here. Everywhere along this edge where they meet is going to be an intersection. This, I hope, shows you why when we're trying to find the solution of a system of planes, we're not talking about two planes. Because it doesn't matter how we angle this plane, either one, no matter how we angle it, there will always be just some edge that has all of these points. In fact, it's a line here, right? This is a line of intersection. And if you remember the definition of a line, it has an infinite number of points. Therefore, two planes is not enough planes to find a unique or single point of intersection. All right, let's look at this picture. Here we've got three different cases of, um, this is, let's call it case A, case B, and case C. And as you can see, we've got three planes in each one. I'm having trouble with my C there. Let's look at this one here. In this case, we've got three planes all angling off in the same direction. And they are never going to intersect, right? Because it's kind of like the parallel lines. These things are parallel planes, and the number of intersections is zero. So just like a system of lines can have zero intersections when the lines are parallel, the same idea holds true for planes. If, they're ang if all three planes angle off in the same direction, no intersection. Now what about this? We've got the purple plane here, the green one, and the red one. How many points can you find that are on all three planes? Because remember, the intersection, or the, the, sorry, the solution of a system is the intersection of each object. So what about this point right here? See how we got a point there that's going to be on the green and the purple? Is that a solution? If it were a solution, it would also have to be on the red plane, and that's why this is not a solution. We need to find a point, and it's right here, that is on all three planes. <coughs> so this is an example of a, s um, of a system of three variable linear equations that has one intersection. Right? This is the only point that is on all three planes. What about this here? We've got like a flat plane and then two that are angling down in different directions. You can think about like this point here, that is going to be on all three of them, and this point, and this point. In fact, this whole red line represents the intersection of these three planes. Remember, a line has an infinite number of points. So when we're talking about how many solutions we can find when we have three planes, it could be zero when we have some parallel planes, it could be one or it can be infinite. There are other examples of planes that have zero, like this is not the only example of uh, three planes that have zero solutions. Um, this green plane, for instance, we could lay it sideways and it would go through the, the black and the purple plane, like if it were perfectly sideways, but there would still be zero points that um, are on all three planes. Moral of the story, if two planes are parallel, two of the three, 
there are zero solutions because those two parallel planes will never have a point in common. Okay, so the thing that we were supposed to end with is what do what do systems of three variable linear equations what do these look like? And what they look like is three planes. What do their solutions or intersections look like? Well, they look like either zero solutions, one solution, or infinite solutions. And zero is when we have two or more, two or more of the planes being parallel. Just like, to go, to go back to the lines, just like when we had parallel lines, there were zero solutions. And remember, we could not have two planes. Two planes is just not enough information. When we have two planes, you always end up with a line of intersection. Okay, that's it for the first of two, of at least two videos on this. The next video will look at how can we find, how can we use the elimination method to find actually where these three planes intersect. Uh, go to mathwarehouse.com slash planes if you'd like more information, resources, videos, and links to applets on this topic. Thank you.